Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh to all of the students. Can you hear my voice? Uh, yes, sir. So please open your webcam. Eh? So all of the four students should be open your webcam. Uh, there should be nine students. Eh? There should be nine students, but I do not know why the other five is not yet registered. I do not know. And, and so, as you can see that eh, from the from the list of the student in your sims. So you may see that there are nine students eh? and there are only five out of four that is here. So I do not know why you are not uh, the other uh, student not coming. But as I said before, I will uh, start to monitor your attendance and whoever didn't come is considered not coming uh, already for the two hours. Eh? So uh, so if your let's say your attendance does not uh, meet the UITM requirement, the possibility to be barred from the final exam will be there. Eh? So I'm very strict about that one because attendance is a very compulsory eh, for the subject. So please, uh, if you know some of your friends here, please uh, uh, inform them uh, to register to the WhatsApp group and also to register to the MS team eh, so that if they are not uh, uh, missing the class anymore eh, after this. So ada kenal tak ini yang tak ada kat dalam ni? Kenal tak? And maybe some of them you know it and because they are so from uh, part four and the rest maybe your senior lah, part six. Eh? Maybe you, you maybe not uh, know well them. Eh? Okay. So to start with uh, our lecture. Okay, thank you for opening the webcam. Eh? Thank you. So saya harap nanti the other uh, four weeks also you will do the same thing, opening the webcam so that I can feel that you are there. Because my experience when doing the class uh, during PKP. Uh, memang masalah, memang masalah sebab we, we cannot understand whether the student learning or not the material. OK, not to uh, delay the lecture, I will start to share the lesson plan. OK, this lesson plan is not yet finalized. Eh? Boleh nampak tak uh, lesson plan ni? Boleh nampak tak? Boleh, saya boleh. Boleh. Eh? OK, this lesson plan is not yet finalized. Why? Because there are some changes has been done to the syllabus. Uh, so I just only giving you the uh, orang kata draft lah, eh? the draft of the lesson plan. Uh, at least you know how the course is going on. Eh? So as you know that uh, this course is the structural reinforced concrete design and steel design. So meaning that you are required to know how to design two materials, are the dual material. The first one is the reinforced concrete, which taking about 10 weeks. Okay? So meaning that is quite a long topic. And another four weeks, we will investigate how to study steel. Okay? Ada empat minggu steel, ada sepuluh minggu concrete. And uh, this subject is a three uh, credit hours. So it's very important to score this subject because kalau you tak score, CGPA you akan turun. And the best part of this semester, we have already changed our test uh, from 30% last semester. Now it is 20%. So did I reduce about 10% daripada last semester? Because uh, when I take this subject last semester, uh, there are about 60% failure of the students who are taking the subjects. So because of that, maybe uh, the syllabus has been a revise and then did a tukar from 30% jadi 20 and your mini project from 10% now going to be 20. Okay? So meaning that your coursework will be test 
plus your mini project giving you 40%. Eh, kalau tidak ni semester lepas dia dah 30-10. Eh. Uh, so sekarang maksud semester ni you bernasib baik lah. Sebab sudah dipermudahkan eh, sepatutnya lah. And as usual final exam still uh, 60% making 100%. So yang ni jelas eh, macam mana kita assess you punya kemahiran. Jelas eh. Ada apa soalan tak tentang assessment ni? Ada apa soalan? Hello guys. Ada apa soalan guys? Okay, lesson plan ni saya tak masukkan lagi dalam new future eh, ataupun dalam sims eh. Uh, sebab it's not yet finalized. Nanti dah finalized, maybe dalam minggu kedua baru saya akan masukkan ke dalam you future eh? sebab saya tak nak bagilah benda yang tak finalize kan nanti you pun tak confirm tetapi test 20% and mean project 20% memang finalize eh? okay so there are several cost outcome and also program outcomes that you should uh, attain after learning this subject and there are three learning uh, cost outcome lah and as i said before because we have two materials so therefore you punya cost outcome also Focusing on that two materials, which is uh, the number one, analyze, reinforce concrete and steel sections. So, bila uh, we talk about analyze ni, maksudnya apa? Maksudnya you have to remember back your structural analysis subject, which is indeterminate structures, and also your solid mechanic structures, subjects. So dia macam ada subjek-subjek lama yang you kena ingat in order to analyze. Okay. So ingat eh, you kena tahu solid mechanics kembali dan juga uh, structural analysis. Eh? And then cost outcome number two, after you analyze, then you are required to design. Ah, uh, Ini adalah benda yang you akan buat pada semester ini iaitu design. Analysis, you have done it in your structure analysis and solid mechanics. So you are required to design the reinforced concrete section and also the steel structure section. Okay. Dan kenapa kita nak design ni? Kita nak design supaya all of the design will make sure that it is for public safety. Meaning that you design the building structures made from concrete is not falling down. It's not deflected, if not sway. Eh? Sebab if that happens, the public will feel not secure ataupun safe. So ini you punya target eh. Supaya safety tu akan dihasilkan. And also to uh, apa ni, to obey certain environmental requirements. Okay. And then the third one, CO3, is to display appropriate techniques. Uh, to design reinforced concrete and steel design problem with awareness of the limitation. So maksudnya bila you nak design, when you want to perform any design, you have to understand the limitation of each material. Okay? Anything in the world has limitations. So when you know the limitation, then you are using that limitation and design it properly. Okay? So that's why kita ada CO3. So setakat ni faham tak CO1, CO2 and cost outcome number 3? Boleh faham? Is there any questions? Pernah floor? Ada question tak? No. No, no. Okay. So if there is no questions, uh, there are also three program outcomes. Huh? And this program outcomes PO2, PO3 and PO4 usually align with your CO1, CO2 and CO3. Lah. So PO2 meaning that you have to identify and analyze. So dia memang sama dengan CO1 analyze. Okay. So you have to identify. So bila saya cakap tentang identification ni, maksudnya apa? Maksudnya bila you beri, diberi satu soalan, you have the ability to see the drawings Uh, maksudnya satu lagi you kena ingat, eh? you kena ingat tentang technical drawings juga. Subject, technical drawing. Lupa saya nak inform. You have to see the given drawing 
and identify the 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 important information. So that's why ada perkataan identify ni. So after you identify, you are required to analyze the problems, okay, using the methods that you use for design. Okay? That will be your PO2. PO3, you are required to perform design solution. So this sama macam CO2 ni, design solution. So you have to prepare design solution uh, and assist the design of system. Eh? So maksudnya you kena pastikan when you design, you make the design easier for the fabricators, for the contractors, for the uh, people who are at site to do the uh, construction and also for the design. Eh? And PO4 uh, is to display investigation on well-defined problems where you are required to use certain information from catalogs. Ingat eh, dalam design, you bergantung kepada supplier. Supplier will put their materials in catalogs. So you are required to study the catalogs yang biasanya kita boleh dapat daripada internet ataupun kita boleh pergi pada company tu, minta catalog, study them and search the material yang you nak daripada catalog itu and you perform uh, apa ni investigation lah. And after you perform investigation, then you have to use the standard. Kita ada standard eh, masa nak design, kita mesti ada standard. Uh, saya terangkan sedikit kat sini. Standard for reinforced concrete adalah Euro Code 2. Uh, standard for steel design will be Euro Code 3. So you have two standards to be obeyed. Eh, standard ni macam you punya kitab lah. You kena merujuk pada dua buah kitab ini to perform the design. Eh. So that's why kita ada PO2 kat sini, PO3 and PO4. Okay, jelas tak tentang CO and PO ni? Ada apa-apa persoalan? Any questions so far from the floor? Satu, dua, tiga, empat, lima, enam. Sudah enam orang. Alhamdulillah, termasuk saya tujuh orang. So, ada dua lagi pelajar yang tak masuk lagi lah. Okay, attendance saya akan ambil daripada sini eh. Nanti saya akan boleh ambil attendance di sini nanti. Okay. So, nampak sini saya boleh download eh. Nampak ni. You cannot get. Dan saya tahu masa you masuk dan masa you keluar. Okay. Saya boleh tahu kat sini. So, saya ini saya akan check nanti. Dan sementara juga, you kena buat attendance melalui you future. So, maksudnya nanti saya akan buat verification lah. Saya akan check attendance yang ada kat MS Team. And then you masuk juga attend dekat you future. So kalau siapa-siapa yang ada membuat percubaan menipu, maksud dia tak masuk MS Team. Tapi tiba-tiba ada kat you future, saya boleh detect. Eh? Okay. Okay, go back to our lecture. Okay, this is our uh, week one. Uh, what would, what is the activity that you want to do today? Lah? So uh, in the beginning, I have introduced you about the Uh, PO and CEO, okay. program outcome sorry, yang ada PO2, PO4 dengan PO3 tadi kan. Okay. CEO pun ada, CO1, CO2 and CO3. And OBE nanti saya akan bagi you link so that you can learn it on your own. Eh. So because this OBE daripada semester 1 sampai sekarang you pun dah belajar. Cuma saya akan tunjukkan, saya akan bagi link nanti you tengok sendiri lah. Eh. Okay. The same thing also goes to the CDIO. Eh. Okay, and nanti saya akan bagi satu link nanti eh, di, uh, di pengakhiran kelas, link untuk perform diagnostic test. Okay, uh, diagnostic test uh, yang saya dah sediakan dalam ni sebenarnya, kat dalam you punya group MS Team, ada uh, instruction kat sini, where you can download you punya ECS diagnostic test, eh. you boleh klik saja sini, you klik saja, you boleh download dia soalan, Eh, you klik kat sini yang ada aneh, yang, yang saya dah keluar. Kita tengah uh, download. Eh. So you boleh download soalan ni. And then jawab semua soalan ini. Dan semasa nak menjawab semua soalan ini. Apa yang you kena buat. 
Tolong tulis jawapan anda pada keping kertas yang lain. Dapat ni? On another piece of paper, you provide the solution, jalan kerja dia. And after you finish, you can scan the solution, gunakan you punya handphone. And attach that solution to the soalan tadi. Dalam bentuk PDF file. Eh? So, maksudnya soalan tadi bersama-sama dengan solution yang you dah buat lah. And then setelah you download, you boleh submit you punya answer ke dalam link ni. Eh? You submit lah ke dalam ni and then uh, you settle lah you punya job about daily test. So ini tak payah buat sekarang. Nanti hantar sebelum pukul 11 ni. Eh? Pukul 11 you hantar nanti. So kalau ni habis pukul 10, you ada masa dalam sejam. Ataupun kalau ada siapa-siapa yang terpaksa hantar lewat, inform saya. Nanti saya akan uh, maklum. Eh? So ini ada dalam ni eh. Dalam you punya group. ECS 338, PEC 110, part D1, D2, MST, eh? you boleh tengok instruction. Eh? Okay. Okay, sekarang ni kita tengok balik, eh? apa yang you nak belajar pada masa 2 jam ni, uh, memang sebenarnya dalam masa 2 jam ni tak sempat, kita maybe perlu minggu ke depan jugalah untuk cover topik yang seminggu ni. We have to cover topic 1 and topic 2 within 1 week. Eh? It's very, very short. Topiknya besar tetapi dalam masa 3 jam kita nak cover. Saya tak yakin saya boleh cover. Eh, tapi tak apa kita gunakan uh, mungkin masa tutorial ataupun masa lecture minggu depan. Eh. So what will be covered in the first topic? Introduction to Structural Concrete Design. Kita nak berkenalan dengan material reinforced concrete design. Kita kena kenal. So that's ada topik ini. Dan topik ini saya nampak dalam mana-mana test dan juga dalam mana-mana final memang sangat dia orang suka tanya sekurang-kurangnya 5 markah. 5 hingga 8 markah memang biasa keluar dalam final atau orang test. So tolong beri perhatian pada topik ini. So what will be the, uh, the covered topic? You will cover uh, we will study about the concept of reinforced concrete design ataupun setengahnya saya tulis dalam perkataan RC ya. Eh. RC maksudnya reinforce concrete eh. So saya akan gunakan singkatan RC untuk reinforce concrete eh. So basic concept of RC design. And then after that we will learn how to use our code of practice. Yang saya kata kitab tadi tu. Iaitu you, yang dikenali sebagai Euro Code 2. Ataupun kita panggil sebagai EC2. Eh. This is our code. And then in that code, you will learn what is the criteria that you use for design, which is this one, uh, iaitu limit state design, serviceability limit state design, uh, the material properties such as characteristic strength, design strength, uh, characteristic load, design loads, and so on. Okay. And... After that, you will learn how to uh, apa ni, include the imperfection in your materials by using partial safety factor. So, itu topik satu. Okay. And at the end of the lesson, you boleh tengok kat sini, apa yang saya nak mas dalam masa sejam pertama tu nanti, sebab kita ada dua jam kan, kita nak you mengenali, identify the relationship between concrete and reinforcement. Sebab itu yang namanya lah reinforced concrete, eh, RC. RC are the material made from concrete plus with reinforcement. Eh, reinforcement ni apa? Besi. Concrete tu concrete lah. So bila material ni kita kahwinkan, kita dapat satu bahan yang baik untuk bangunan ataupun untuk apa-apa infrastructure. Eh. And that's why you have to know the relationship. Apa hubung kait antara dua bahan ni. Eh? Dan hubung kait ni kita nak kita nak sangkutkan dengan apa? Kita nak sangkutkan dengan safety, economy and also ethics. Eh? That is our lesson outcome yang pertama. Lah. The second uh, lesson outcome is to explain ultimate limit state and serviceability limit state. Nanti kita akan cerita pasal benda ni. Kalau saya cerita lebih kat sini pun, maybe you tak faham lagi. So, this is our first topic. Eh? So, hopefully by next other one hour after this, we will cover about the structural concrete design. Okay, bila dah masuk topik kedua ni, dia dah serius sedikit. 
Kenapa dah serius? Sebab dia dah nak masuk bab design. Okay. Bab pertama ni more on theory. Tak ada langsung calculation yang detail. But once you go inside to topic number two, you start to perform analysis. Eh? Bila perkataan analysis ni, for sure you will use mathematical equations, uh, solid mechanics punya principles. Sebab itu saya nak you ingat balik structure, apa you punya solid mechanics. And also some of your structural analysis. Dia akan combine dalam satu topik where you learn about stress block diagram. Nanti saya akan tegangkan what is stress block diagram. And then how to design for singly and doubly reinforced concrete structure. Item number two ni. And after that, you are required to derive the moment of a resistance for uh, for singly and doubly sections. Eh? And this moment of resistance juga terbagi pada dua keadaan. Eh? Ada keadaan uh, where you have a rectangular sections and another one where you have a flange section. Nanti kita akan tengok lah. Maybe you tak akan faham lagi benda ni. Eh? So at the end of another one hour, this is your learning outcome yang kita nak you, you uh, master lah. Eh? Where you can compare and contrast the stress strain relationship so bila ada perkataan stress and strain ni you kena ingat dalam solid mechanics what is stress what is strain sebab itu saya kata you kena ingat balik solid mechanics eh? sebab kita nak gunakan untuk our material which is concrete and you punya steel reinforcement eh? so after you know the stress strain then you able to illustrate, eh? illustrate maksudnya menggambarkan dan boleh menghitung, compute the stress and strain distribution. For sure, yang nombor dua ni memang kena tahu solid mechanics. Wajib kena tahu solid mechanics. Eh? And you want to use that uh, stress strain distribution in order to analyze the stress block. So maksudnya point nombor dua ni dengan point nombor tiga ni berkait rapat. Bila you dah boleh lukis, kemudian you boleh analyze supaya you boleh analyze whether the section to be under reinforce, balance reinforce atau over reinforce. Dia ada tiga jenis classification. Dan tamatlah dua topik dalam masa tiga jam. Eh? Sebab you ada tiga jam lecture kat sini. Ini nampak? And then you have one to two receptions. So boleh faham untuk minggu pertama ni apa yang kita nak cover? Boleh faham tak? Ada soalan tak setakat ni? From our class, ada soalan tak setakat ni? Boleh faham eh? Encik Azrul, boleh faham Encik Azrul? So harus slow sangat eh? Suara so, susah, maybe you tak buka mic kot. Okay. okay, so the second week, you boleh tengok eh, second week macam ni lah eh. Uh, masih lagi uh, reinforce concrete design, tapi saya akan tunjuk ini pada minggu kedua lah. Sebab dia detail eh. Dan minggu yang ini nanti kita akan ada hari raya lah. So seminggu kita akan cuti nanti lah eh. And then minggu keempat nanti bila kita masuk, setiap kita akan masuk juga structure concrete eh. Sehingga bila? Sehingga ke minggu ke-10. Minggu ke-10 tu ataupun minggu ke-9 kita baru habis konkret. Nampak kan? Eh? Topik konkret ni memang banyak kan? Eh? Kemudian selepas gawai break, barulah kita masuk minggu ke-10 tu still design. Dan di sini nanti you akan memiliki group mini project yang 20% tu. Eh? Sehinggalah minggu ke-14 habis still. Eh? Uh, seperti saya kata, uh, lesson plan ni masih lagi draft. Saya belum boleh letak dalam you future. Cuma untuk tontonan hari ini saya benarkanlah. Cuma dia tak lagi uh, uh, final. Eh? Sebab tak ada lagi tarikh di mana you punya test one akan dibuat. Tidak ada lagi. Jadi saya tak boleh kata final. Eh? So test one akan berlaku saya rasa maybe Maybe lepas raya kot. Eh, saya rasa lah. Saya buat jangkaan selepas raya. Eh, so ingat. Test tu 20% ni banyak. Eh. Dulu lagi banyak 30%. So sepatutnya you. 
boleh dapat markah yang tinggi lah untuk you punya uh, carry mark eh. Okay. So we start with our lecture. So if uh, for not for delay. So this is the lecture. Okay. Untuk lecture notes, you can download it from you future. That is final. Eh? Only the lesson plan you cannot download yet lah. So you boleh buka you future and see my folder under my name. Okay, my name is Asharul Fitri Senin. So by looking it on that folder, you can download the notes according to the week. Right? So again, uh, this is my email if you want to contact with me. And then this is my phone number if you want to contact by call or WhatsApp. And my room, selepas raya nanti you balik sini, you boleh meet me at level 6 block pedan. Eh? Dekat-dekat dengan apa ni? Mission Porto State punya location. Eh? Boleh cari saya kat situ lah. Okay. Okay, so this is, as I said before, uh, the code of site is ECS338, Structural Concrete and Steel Design. Credit hours, Tiga. Uh, contact hours for uh, uh, for uh, for your pembelajaran dan pengajaran, Tiga jam lecture and one hour for tutorial. Uh, one hour, 120 hours, and it is uh, for part five students, patutnya lah. Uh, saya pun tak pasti tengok ada student part 4 so maybe you can refer pada you punya PA lah kalau dia dah benarkan uh, it's okay lah eh? and the prerequisite is not only ECS 248 tetapi juga you kena ada prerequisite about your structural analysis eh? saya harap sebab kalau you tak kukuh you punya structural analysis you are in suffering mood when you do this subject eh? Okay, so outcome base. So kita tengok sikit lah outcome base ni walaupun saya kata saya nak bagi link. So as you know that uh, outcome base uh, education is a method. Eh? Dia adalah satu kaedah where we design our curriculum. Curriculum ni apa? Curriculum ni macam you punya syllabus lah. Uh, minggu pertama belajar subjek apa. Minggu kedua belajar topik apa. Sampai minggu ke belah. Itulah curriculum. Where the curriculum is designed and how we teach you the subject. Supaya apa? Supaya all of the student can know what they are learning. Eh, kalau tidak nanti caca merba. Apa yang kita ajar tak sampai ke dalam you punya minda. Eh. So OBE ni uh, will address the following questions lah. What do you want? What do you have to learn? Kali perasa ni benda-benda ni semua ada dekat kita punya lesson outcome tadi yang saya tunjuk dekat lesson plan apa yang you nak belajar kan uh, contohnya you you are required to analyze to identify uh, itu semua adalah benda you nak belajar how do you want to learn it so that's why I give you the lecture on teaching you to guide you how to learn that topic and how you will know that you have learned so usually benda ni kita akan tengok dalam you punya assessment lah masa test semasa you punya projek dan juga final exam. Yang ini yang akan mengukur sejauh mana you have learned the topic. So this is outcome based education. So maybe you tengok ni sebagai uh, rujukan lah. Bukan kita nak tanya lah exam pun benda ni. Eh. Cuma nak tahu je what is going on on your part. Eh. Okay. So I uh, so I say you should know this thing uh, principle in OBE. You should focus about outcomes. Eh? Kalau you masih ingat lagi, saya ada tunjuk tadi kita punya lesson outcome ni. Saya pun dah padam ni. Saya ada tunjuk pasal lesson outcome. So you kena fokus pada outcome apa yang you nak fokus. Eh? And let the student know what they are aiming for. So saya dah tunjukkan tadi, what is the aiming focus of the topic. Saya dah tunjuk tadi dalam lesson, outcome, lesson plan. And uh, hopefully by knowing that you can have high expectation of success. Eh? Maksudnya, kalau you dah fokus, you learn, sepatutnya, secara teorinya, you will success lah in your test one, you punya test, dan you punya mini project and final exams. Eh? And uh, by knowing your punya focus, you develop your opportunity to learn the topic on your piece. Maksudnya, you tahulah berapa banyak masa yang diperlukan untuk study subjek tu. Contohnya macam hari ni, kita perlu tiga jam. Dan you tahu topik reinforce concrete sampai sembilan minggu. So maksudnya you kena spend banyak masa untuk concrete berbanding steel. Ah Itu maksudnya expanded opportunity tu. Eh? 
at your at your own pace you learn the topic supaya apa supaya you dapat high success okay boleh tak any questions penyap dia ayu ni ataupun sebenarnya you tak buka mic ni you tak buka mic ni eh so uh, dalam kumpulan memang ada seorang perempuan ni saya rasa ada dua orang kot ni kalau tak silap saya Okay, go back to our lecture. Okay, so PO ni you boleh rujuk dalam mana-mana booklet, saya tak nak era sangat. Cuma yang penting untuk you lah, PO2, PO3 and PO4. Eh, PO2 is to analyze, PO2 is, PO3 is for design, PO4 is to conduct investigation. Ingat keyword saja, tak payah ingat semua lah. To analyze, to design and to provide in conduct investigation. Okay, so yang lain-lain ni tak terlibat dalam UIC Libus lah, dalam subjek lain. Subjek kita cuma tiga dia, PO2, PO3 and PO4. Eh? Okay, CO1 and CO3 I have already given to you in the lesson plan. So, you can view it on your own. And you may see that the relationship between you punya CO1 and PO2, CO2 and PO3, CO3 and PO4. So, dia selari ya, eh? kedua-dua ni eh? CO1 dia akan sama dengan PO2. CO2 akan diukur dalam PO3. CO3 diukur dalam PO4. Eh? Okay. And syllabus saya dah beritahu tadi. Uh, you, you you will cover topic 1 and topic 2. Chapter 1 and chapter 2 dalam 3 jam. Yang saya tak yakin boleh habis dalam 3 jam pun. Maybe kita kena pinjam minggu depan sikit. And topic uh, concrete ni will cover until 9 weeks eh. And after week 10, ni sepatutnya bukan week 11 ni, eh, week 10 sepatutnya. Uh, until 14, you will cover still eh. So, you nak nampak sekarang ni apa yang you nak fokus eh, berapa banyak masa eh. Uh, ini secara umum saja, eh, belum betul lagi eh. Kebiasaannya, yang ni pun tak betul eh, SS Mark ni sepatutnya 20%. Ini yang lama eh, yang semester lepas. Test you pada masa sekarang adalah 20%, bukan 30%. Dan kebiasaannya pada minggu ke-8. Kebiasaannya. Tetapi tak semestinya. So, the week of your test, saya akan inform later. Cuma ini adalah pada semester lepas. Maksudnya lepas 2 bulan lah juga. Eh. Mini project usually at week 10. Dia ni biasa. Eh. And the mark is 20%. Not 10. But final exam is 60. Eh. So, dia lah 20, 20, 60. Eh. Ada perbezaan kat sikit. Eh. Sini, ini semester lepas punya uh, grade. Eh. Uh, punya assessment mark set. Okay, for a reference, book left reference, for concrete design, sepatutnya you kena ada buku ni lah, textbook ni. Reforce Concrete Design 2 Euro Code 2. This is uh, penulisnya lah Muhammad Saleh Yassin. Eh. Muhammad Saleh Yassin. Sekejap eh, saya tengok ada tak pen kat sini. Uh, point to option, pen. Dia punya author lah Muhammad Saleh Yassin eh. Muhammad. So, ini buku UTM eh. Muhammad Saleh. So, when either you can buy from, apa ni? Shopee pun ada ni. Dalam RM65. Kalau edisi yang terbaru. Kalau edisi yang lama sikit, dia RM54. Tapi kontennya sama lah. Cuma yang baru ni ada a few things dia add up eh. So, much more better. You boleh beli ataupun you boleh get it from your senior or maybe you can come to UITM kalau you nak come lah dalam masa 4 minggu ni to borrow from the library eh? and then for steel design you need this book uh, design of structure elements uh, the author is Chana, Chana Karya Arya is a, is a Thailand lecturer eh? Thailand that's why nama ni pun pelik sikit eh? yang buku pertama ni from Malaysia orang Melayu kita yang buat lah and for uh, code of practice you may nampak the first eh, this is the code of practice you can get it from you future in the you future i have given to you this euro code too ini kitab yang you nak guna untuk design eh, euro code too for concrete and for steel untuk minggu ke-10 nanti kita akan gunakan euro code 3 lah eh, euro code 3 so ini adalah you future eh. cuma textbook tak ada dalam you future lah you have to buy it or maybe you can borrow it from library ataupun from your senior. Okay. So get this book because it's very important to you. 
Because a lot of example is that. Eh. Ada soalan tak sebelum kita masuk pada lecture? Dah setengah jam saya dah mas, uh, cerita about uh, course information. And after this, I want to proceed with the lecture itself. Okay, ada soalan tak sebelum ni? Sebelum kita masuk topik one. Hmm, tak ada. Okay, thank you. Kalau ada, tolong interrupt saya. Saya tak ada masalah. You interrupt je. Saya tak kisah. Eh? Okay, boleh. So, if better kalau saya gunakan pen. So, week one, topic one. As I said, topic one and topic two. Soalan test dan juga final exam suka sangat tanya sebagai soalan pertama. Sekurang-kurangnya 5 hingga 8 markah akan ditanya. Okay, so our course outcome, this is our focus, is to analyze reinforced concrete and steel section in accordance to the relevant standards. So, bila I, uh, I talk about standards, meaning that Euro code 2 untuk concrete and Euro code 3 for steel. And for our program outcome is to identify and analyze well-defined problems by using substantial conclusion using codified method of analysis. Okay, so at the end of the lesson, you should be able to master all of this sepatutnya. So ini kira macam soalan bocor ni. Apa yang boleh ditanya dalam topik ni? Ini jawapan bocor ni. You should be able to understand the list of reference, sorry, the list of reference in Euro codes. And after that, you are required to explain the basic concept of RC design. And after that, you are required to describe the material used in the construction and the function of that material in the members in building. Okay. So, maksudnya kita punya application more on building. Eh. Kita takkan design empangan. Kita takkan design uh, contohnya bangunan apa ni struktur air water tank no eh? that is not our scope sebab building eh you should be able also to describe and explain the limit state design iaitu ultimate limit states and severity limit states you should be able to discuss what is the concept of partial safety factor and how this is important in structure design. Okay. And after that, you should be able to list and elaborate. Sekejap, eh. Apa terbang dari luar atas? Isi. Okay. You should be able to list and elaborate the types of loading that can apply on your structures. Okay. So, ini adalah contoh-contoh soalan bocor yang boleh keluar dalam final dan dalam test. Within 5 to 8 marks boleh keluar. Macam ni. Eh? So, please be prepared. Okay. We start with the standards. Eh? The Eurocode standards for designs. Eh? Eurocode standards. In actual, we have a lot of standards family sebenarnya for reinforced concrete and for steel design. Kita ada banyak. Eh? Starting with the Euro code EN1990. This is the name of the code. Eh? Nama code tu adalah EN1990. And what is EN? EN stands for Euro norm. Eh? Euro norm. So, dia ambil E dengan N macam ni. Euro 6. That's why dia namakan sebagai EC eh. Eh sorry, EN eh. EN 1990. Which is uh, giving the guidelines on basis of structure design. EN 1991 or some people call it as EC1. Kenapa ada 1 kat sini eh? Because it is published in the year of 1991. That's why you call it as EC1. This document talks about the loadings 
ataupun action on structures. Okay. Remember that when you want to design any structures, you kena tahu loading yang bertindak pada structures tu. Loading apa? Loading load lah. Load yang you, you pernah belajar dalam structure ini sini dulu kan? You belajar tentang UDL. You belajar pasal trapezoidal loads. You have learned about point loads. So that loads is covered in this guideline iaitu you rukut one action on structures. Okay. And to design your reinforced concrete material, you, you need EC2. Eh, what is EC? EC adalah Eurocodes. Eh, Eurocode dia ambil perkataan E sini dengan C ni. Eh, and then ada two ni. Two ni datang di mana? Datang daripada tahun yang publish this document. So that's why that document called as EC2 which is talking about the design of your RC structures. So maksudnya untuk RC design, you need these three documents untuk sembilan minggu pertama itu. Sembilan minggu pertama, you memerlukan tiga kod ini. Iaitu EC0. Yang pertama ni kita biasa panggil sebagai EC0. Kenapa 0? 0 datang pada kosong. Eh? EC1 and EC2. So you can download this in the you future folder. Eh? Untuk sembilan minggu pertama ni, EC0 until EC2 diperlukan. Kejap eh, saya kena tunggu kamu terbang ni berhenti eh. Di bising. Okay. When you want to design for steel, which is at week 9 ataupun 10, depending on the progress, you need a code for steel design that we call as EC3. Okay. 3 ni datang di mana? The number of 3. Uh, 1993, where the document is published, this is to design the steel structures. So, minggu ke-9 atau 10 sampai minggu ke-14, you need EC3. And the rest of the document is not used in our syllabus. Why? Because that material such as timber, masonry, batu-bata, eh, geotechnical design, earthquake resistant and alloy is not designed in the syllabus. Uh, termasuk juga tentang composite steel and concrete structure. Kita tak design. So, Eurocode 4, Eurocode 5, Eurocode 6, Eurocode 7, Eurocode 8 and 9, you are not using in this syllabus. Tetapi, you kena tahulah. Sebab dalam test, dia boleh tanya, what are the uh, list the Eurocodes that you know? So, you kena senarai lah semua Eurocode ni. Daripada Eurocode 0 until Eurocode 9. Okay, boleh faham tak tentang Euro code sini, senarai dia yang ada. Is there any questions? Is there any questions? No, sir. Pastikan anda tidak ada persoalan ni sebab nanti bila time test, bila time exam, tanya tak tahu nak jawab. Okay. Okay. So why are this code is required? So code tadi yang kita daripada Euro code zero until Euro code nine tu, dia bukan saja saja kita uh, publish. It is for certain apa ni certain punya uh, task. Eh? Euro code zero. Kali nampak kat sini Euro code zero. Sekejap ya. Eh. Euro code zero, Allah. Euro code zero is is useful to ensure that your structure is always safe. Your structure is under good serviceability, and your structure has uh, suitable durability during its life. So, Sebab itulah kita perlukan Euro Code Zero eh? because by using this guideline, you are having some kind of idea how to make sure your structure is safe, serviceable, 
and durable. Eh? Durable ni apa dalam bahasa Melayu? Durable ni maksud tahan lasak. Structure you tahan lasak dengan masa. Dia tak mudah patah. Dia tak mudah retak. Apa lagi? It does not uh, corroded. Berkarat. Sebab besi boleh berkarat kan? Uh, so kalau structure tu not durable. So meaning that it's not good. Eh? If let's say the structure is uh, is failed due to tension force. So meaning that it's not safe. So that's why you could zero is important. You know in your design. Eh? And for Euro code 1 ataupun EC1, what is the document is for? This Euro code 1 is to give you what are the loads acting on the structures. Eh? What are the loads? Uh, uh, biasa kalau you pernah tengok dalam you punya structure list, saya, saya uh, buat satu slide tambahan. In your structure analysis before, if you still remember, usually you are given a beam like this, let's say a simply supported, and suddenly you have a load acting on the beam. Let's say the load is 2 kN per meter, let's say, and let's say I have a point load 4 kN. When you want to design, you have to know what is the load magnitude. Sebab dalam design ini tak dibagi tau. Ini tak dibagi. You have to get the value. So how to get the value? The value will be listed in Euro code 1. So that's why ini penting untuk design. Why? It is giving you the magnitude of that loads acting on the structures. So that is Euro code 1. Eh? How about for Euro code 2? So as I said before, Euro code 2 is for design and detailing structures made from concrete. So 9 minggu pertama, you akan gunakan Euro code 2. Kenapa? Sebab when you want to perform the design, you need Euro code 2 document to design concrete structures. And after week 10, you need Euro code 3 to design steel structures pula. And the rest of the Euro code, which is Euro code 4 until Euro code 9, is not required in the syllabus. Sebab you tak design timber, you tak design masonry, you tak design aluminium, you tak design composite. Faham eh? As well as for geotechnical, you tak design because this subject is not geotechnical subject, it's a structure. And the same goes to the seismic design. Okay, nak boleh faham nak ni? Sekali lagi, Euro code 0 sampai Euro code 9 tu. Patut ke penting kan ni? Boleh faham nak? Ada soalan tak? Hmm, tak ada, saya boleh. Okay. Okay, now kita nak bercinta dengan satu material yang kita nak raja selama 9 minggu. Apa material itu? That material we call as reinforced concrete. Kita nak kenal ni. Eh? Biasanya saya namakan as RC. Okay, what is RC? Reinforced concrete. Eh? Reinforced concrete is a material that you use uh, you can say abundantly in Malaysia in a lot of building. If you come to UITM, you may see that the building is made from reinforced concrete. Eh? So what are reinforced concrete? It's a composite material. What is composite? Composite maksudnya apa? Material that is made from at least two different materials. And I think you should remember composite material when you studied about solid mechanics. Saya yakin you dah belajar about composite. Eh? Composite ni apa? Composite is the material that is made by minimally two different material, which is, in our case, is a concrete material and steel material. So by combining this concrete and steel reinforcement together, we create a composite material called as reinforced concrete. OK, 
Okey, boleh faham tu? Boleh faham tak? Ada soalan tak? Any questions? Satu, dua, tiga, empat, lima, enam. Satu, tiga, empat, lima, enam, tujuh. Dah tujuh dah. Satu, dua, tiga, empat, lima, enam, tujuh. Oh, dah tujuh. Okay. Okay. However, eh, however, these two different material which is concrete and reinforcement, dia ada dia punya limitation and also advantages. Contohnya, as an example, if you use concrete alone, the concrete is not good. Why? Because it's a brittle material. Apa masuk brittle material ni? Boleh tak you beritahu saya, apa masuk brittle material? Dan uh, what is the problem of brittle material? Boleh tak siapa-siapa beritahu saya, brittle material ni apa? Dan apa masalah brittle material ni? Anyone? Apa itu brittle? Hmm, apa itu brittle? Dalam bahasa Melayu dia apa brittle? Senang kita kita tukar dalam bahasa Melayu. Brittle ni apa? Come on gang, bulan puasa ni sepatut lagi aktif kita. Brittle ni apa? Brittle dia dalam bahasa Melayu adalah rapuh. Tahu rapuh? Macam biskut air raya tu nanti kita nak beli tu kan? Kita makan kan? Bulan puasa cerita pasal makan kan? Kita gigit biskut kan? Kan dia rapuh, sedap kan? Senang nak larut dengan air kan? Ha, itulah brittle. Bayangkan kalau biskut raya tu tak rapuh, keras macam besi. You nak makan? Confirm you tak nak makan kan? Sebab dia dia tak brittle. So ini masalah. Kenapa masalahnya? Apa masalah brittle ni? Apa masalah brittle ni? What is the problem of brittle? Sebab meter ni rapuh. So, what is the problem? Rapuh ni. Apa masalah ni? The problem of brittle meter is that the failure is very sudden. Contohnya, kalau you makan biskut raya kan, you gigit, you boleh predict tak tiba-tiba dia patah tu kat mana? You tahu ke? Biskut tu, you gigit kat gigi kan? Oh, aku kalau aku gigit biskut ni kat gigi kan? Ah nanti dia patah kat belakang ni. You boleh predict ke? You tak boleh predict. The same thing goes to concrete. Concrete kalau you guna alone, you you put a load on it, eh? Dia akan patah di tempat yang kita tak boleh jangka. And this is a problem. As engineer, kita kena pastikan that failure kita boleh predict di mana. So this is a problem. So inilah limitation kenapa concrete uh, ni. Tetapi dia ada kelebihan pula. Walaupun dia tak bagus dari segi uh, material yang brittle, but it is very strong in cooperation. Ah ini kelebihan concrete. This is the advantages of concrete. Concrete is good in compression, but it's a very brittle material. So kenapa brittle material is ni bermasalah sebab when it's a brittle material, the concrete is very weak in tension. They're good in compression, eh? tetapi it's very weak in tension. So, untuk nak mengelakkan concrete ni gagal dalam tension, sebab itulah kita kawinkan steel kita ke dalam concrete. Kenapa? Because steel is very strong in tensile strength. Jadi maksudnya tugas uh, menanggung beban tensile in concrete is taken by reinforcement steel. Kenapa? Because steel is good in tension. And steel also good in compression. Eh? Steel ini bagus eh, dalam dua perkara. Dia bagus in tension, dia bagus dalam tension. Tetapi concrete is not good in tension sebab itulah dia boleh jadi brittle material. Kelebihan konkrit dia cuma good in compression. Okey, boleh faham tak perbezaan kelebihan dan kekurangan dua material ni? Boleh faham tak? 
Any questions so far? Uh, no, tak ada. Boleh saya uh, uh, use the next slide? Boleh? Hmm, boleh, sir. Okay. This slide will show you ini satu video I take from lab to show you the meaning of brittle material of concrete. So, cuba tengok video ini dan tengok bagaimana this concrete is filled under brittle. So, you have a beam there. Eh? It's a beam structure made from concrete only. Tak ada steel eh. Concrete. And there is a point load acting at the middle. You boleh nampak ada satu beban ke atas tu ditekan. And then cuba tengok macam mana dia gagal. You nampak tak ada serpian-serpian konflik tu dah, dah jatuh, pecah. You nampak tak dia jatuh. And then tiba-tiba gagal begitu saja tanpa you tahu bila dia nak gagal. This is that we call as brittle failure. So nampak tak macam mana brittle failure tu? Dia berlaku secara sudden. Secara tiba-tiba. Uh, sudden. Sudden failure. You tak boleh tahu bila dia berlaku. Yang ini yang masalah konkrit ni kalau tak ada besi. Eh? Ini konkrit saja. And then I give you the failure of steel. Yang ni you pernah buat kan masa dalam lab dulu. You tarik besi sampai putus. Pernah buat tak dalam lab? Pernah buat tak ni lab ni? You buat tensile test. Pernah. Pernah? Halus benar suaranya. Okay. See this video. To see what is the failure mode of steel. So you can see that this is a rebar made from steel. It's under tensile load. And then it is being pulled pull out. Increasingly lah. Semakin lama semakin kuat dia tarik eh. So you can see that. Nanti you akan nampak satu tempat sini yang namakan sebagai necking eh. Dia macam jadi leher eh. Ah, you boleh nampak kat sini eh. Dia nak fill kat sini. You know, nampak macam ada berlaku uh, necking eh. Ah, dekat sini, sorry. Dekat tempat anak panah tu. Dia akan dapat necking kat situ. And then dia akan putus. Apa beza failure yang ini berbanding konkret ni? You perasan tak apa, apa beza dia? Boleh tak you beri satu conclusion? Apa beza failure ini dengan yang tadi? Yang ni boleh predict dia punya failure. Okay. Satu lagi yang mana yang lebih lambat nak fail? Yang mana lebih lambat nak fail? Yang besi ke yang konkrit? Boleh lagi bagi pandangan? Yang besi ke yang konkrit yang, yang gagal? Yang lambat gagal? Besi. Besi. So meaning that steel has a very good material because it gives you a kind of safety. Kenapa safety? Bayangkan eh, kalau you balik UITM, tiba-tiba bangunan UITM ni semua buat daripada konkrit, tak ada letak besi. You berani kena naik bangunan tu? Eh? Engineer UITM kata ah, bangunan ni kita dah buat, tak tahu lah bila dia buat. Memang tak ada besi dalam, cuma konkrit semata-mata. You berani ke naik? Secara logik, you tak akan berani nak naik. Sebab, that concrete, kalau you letak load, dia akan berlaku sudden failure yang you tak boleh predict. Tapi kalau katakan you masuk bangunan UITM, selepas raya nanti, you memang tahu structure made from cement and steel, you will feel safe. Kenapa? Because that steel is very Uh, giving you an extra safety kenapa? sebab besi itu akan lambat gagal dulu okay? so this is another video you showing you how the concrete is under load eh? so you tengok eh, video ni this is uh, concrete saja tanpa besi eh? and you can see that on the top eh? so bila nampak situ dia akan letak load eh? nampak tiba-tiba saja berlaku failure tanpa besi this is brittle failure Okay, yang ini pula, you have the same concrete tapi you letak besi di bawah. Nampak tu, dia letak besi di bawah and then dia akan letak semen. 
and then dia akan apply the loads until fail and you may see the difference eh you nampak can you see that dia lambat sikit nak nak failure ah you compare brittle failure at the top and ductal failure you nampak brittle failure is very sudden whereas ductal failure is not sudden dia lambat sikit kenapa dia lambat sebab dia ada besi dekat bawah tu and that still will take the tensile stress inside the concrete and uh, strengthen the the concrete yang lemah dalam tensile so ingat eh soalan-soalan ini suka sangat tanya dalam test dan final exam dia suka nak tanya perbezaan dan you kena faham dan kadang-kadang you kena lukis eh so tolong faham eh boleh tak ni Come on guys. Kenapa senyap eh? Makin puasa makin lemah kita. Senyap eh semua ni. Boleh follow ni? Boleh sir. So nampak tak kenapa sekarang kita kena kawinkan steel dengan konkrit. Kita tidak akan gunakan semata-mata konkrit aja. Kita kena kawinkan dua-dua bahan ni. Kena. Sebab apa? Sebab you pun dah tengok gambar tadi macam mana failure tu happen. Dekat atas ni gambar, kalau letak konkrit saja tanpa steel. Yang di bawah tu, kita letak konkrit dan steel. And then you can see that uh, apa ni, uh, specimen yang di bawah tu much more safer sebab dia ada ductile failure. Eh, sebab failure tu tak berlaku secara mendadak. Dia ambil masa, eh, you boleh nampak crack. Maksudnya nanti kalau bangunan you nampak crack, you boleh keluar daripada bangunan tu dulu. Sebelum dia patah. You ada masa. Berbeza dengan building. Yang hanya konkrit saja. You tak sempat nak keluar. Buka-buka mata saja dah marah buka. Eh, Tuhan dah tanya you. Soalan azab kubur lah. Tak sempat. Tak sempat. So that's why. Engineers. Combine these two material. Uh, and they act compositely. The material that we call as reinforced concrete material. Okay. So, saya ni saya tekankan benda ini sebab dalam final dan dalam test, suka sangat dia tanya. Okay. So, by... Okay. So, you dah tahu tentang perbezaan eh. Kelebihan dan kekurangan concrete and steel. Now, kita nak tengok about design. What is design? Design ni you boleh tengok dalam CO3 tadi. Saya ada perkataan design. So what is design? Design is sebenarnya adalah satu proses. Eh? It's a process where you select the material and also you select the size of that material as well as the, the area of that material before you construct the, the structure for the public. So maksudnya siapa nak buat selection ni? You lah. Sebab you akan jadi penolong jurutera that will help the engineers to select how, what is the material. Adakah you nak gunakan konkrit ke, you nak gunakan steel ke. And then if you select konkrit, konkrit grade berapa yang you nak pakai? Adakah grade 20? Is it grade 35? Is it grade 40? If you are using steel reinforcement, you want use, you to use which diameter? Are you using the 10mm diameter? 12mm diameter, 25, 32, 40. So you have to select the material and the sizes. So kalau you tengok beam, eh? beam, uh, berapa besar beam tu? Adakah 250 kali 400 ke? Adakah 100 setengah kali 450 ke? You decide. And that decision pro, uh, process, we call it as design. Eh? So itu perkataan design ni ada dalam subjek ni sebab you yang akan menentukan the size of that material, the size of the section, and the material strength you can tentukan. And all of this design selection, okay, amat bergantung kepada apa? Amat bergantung kepada loading. Okay. Kenapa amat bergantung pada loading? Okay, saya akan tunjukkan kenapa amat bergantung. Okay, if let's say I have two different beams. 
They see the first beam, macam ni. The second beam will be something like this. And the first beam have UDL. The second beam also have the same UDL. But this UDL is, let's say, 2 kN per meter, let's say. And this one, let's say, 200 kN per meter. And let's say the span is 2 meter. Sama, 2 meter. You rasa-rasa bending moment mana yang paling besar? Yang sebelah kiri ke, yang sebelah kanan bending moment yang paling besar? Yang mana besar? Rasa-rasa you lah. Di mana yang akan dapat bending moment diagram yang besar? Bending moment diagram akan dapat macam ni kan? Dua-dua dapat bending moment diagram sama. Tapi, yang mana bending moment yang paling besar? Sebelah kiri ke sebelah kanan? Hello guys. <coughs> kanan. So maybe kanan kata eh, saya tak kira eh. Saya tak kira. Maybe you dapat ini kata lah ini maybe 80. Saya tak tahu kan. Kita kena kira lah ni saya, saya isi menilai eh. And maybe this one is 8. So when you have a very large bending moment, for sure this beam will have to use a larger section of beam size. So maybe size ini, maybe 300 times 600, maybe. And for the low bending moment, maybe the size is quite small. Right? Maybe this one to be 150 times 450. So as a designer, you have to design what is the size of the beam according to the loads. Nampak ni? Semakin kurang you punya loads, semakin kurang you punya bending moment. Dah tentu you punya size pun akan kecil. Sebab itu ayat ni tadi, it is considered based on loading. Loading will determine the size of the uh, of the apa ni? element and also the material yang you nak gunakan. So maybe untuk concrete yang sebelah sini, maybe the steel grade will be maybe 35. But for the left part, maybe the steel grade is only 15. Nampak? So, you kena pilih steel, uh, apa, concrete grade yang rendah dan juga concrete grade yang tinggi according to the loads. So, itulah sebabnya you kena perform design. Okay. Boleh? Dah faham dah apa maksud design? Dan Berdasarkan apakah desain itu ditentukan? Tahu dah? Hello gang. Senyap benar you ni. Tak ada langsung respon. Apa jadi? Tak buat, tak sahur ke apa? Saya sahur pukul 2 pagi tadi eh. Saya masih boleh lagi bercakap dengan uh, cukup bertenaga pagi ni. What happened to you? Senyap semua ni. Okay, that is design. So, kadang-kadang soalan ini pun boleh ditanya dalam final atau dalam test. So, tolong faham. Okay. What are the design objective? Dalam apa-apa yang kita buat dalam dunia ni, kita mesti ada matlamat. The same thing goes to design. Design juga ada matlamat ataupun dalam bahasa ini lah, objektif. So, what are the design objektif? Our design objektif is to make sure that your structure is always safe. When you design your beam, your beam doesn't fall down. When you design your beam, your beam doesn't crack. When you design your beam, your beam does not overturn. When you design your beam, the beam does not showing any deterioration. Sebab apa? Sebab kita nak pastikan orang rasa selamat. Itu tujuan kenapa you design. The second objective is to fulfill its purpose. So what are the meaning of this? So if let's say you design the beam, 
where the beam will be always to resist loads vertically like this. So when you design a beam, the beam must be deflected. Setiap beam dalam dunia ni mesti deflected. Tak mungkin tak deflect. Cuma sama ada you nampak atau tidak saja deflection tu. Sebab kalau you nampak, confirm you takkan masuk bangunan tu. Eh? Tetapi dia akan deflect a very very small deflection. So, ensure that when you design your beam, it is deflecting. You janganlah design sampai beam you langsung tak deflecting. That is not good. Sebab itu maksudnya tentang fulfill its purpose. It must be deflect. The same thing for column. Tiang. Eh, tiang. Tiang bangunan. When uh, tiang is to resist compression force. Eh, beban mampatan. Dia mampatkan. So ensure that this column can allow certain shortening. Eh, sebab bila ada satu member under compression force, dia boleh memindik sedikit. Tetapi pemindikannya taklah terlalu besar. Kalau nampak besar, bangunan tu tentu mendap. The column still shorten but very small. So ensure that when you design your column, you allow some shortening movement. Supaya dia boleh fulfill its purpose. Okay. And the third objective is to have a strong structure. So maksudnya strong ni apa? Maksudnya your structure does not, apa ni, uh, permukaan concrete you tak berlopak. Sebab biasa kalau you buat, you buat concrete, you have a concrete beam. If they say, uh, suddenly uh, there is a heavy load tiba-tiba jatuh dekat sini, dia akan jadi lubang lah situ. Kan. Ha, ini maksudnya structure tu tak strong lah. Should be, when you apply any loads to the structure, the structure still standing without any deterioration. Tak akan berlaku perlubangan, tidak akan retak dan sebagainya. Dia strong. Eh? And the structure does not also uh, apa ni? overturn. Eh? Dia tidak akan berlaku jatuh. Strong. And the last one is economy. Economy ini maksud apa? The structure is very safe. The structure can fill its purpose. The structure is strong, but the cost of the construction is very minimum. Sebab kena ingat eh, when you perform any design, you perform the design for your client. The client will will budget the project. So kalau you hasilkan satu satu yang memang selamat, yang memang memenuhi kendaknya kuat tetapi kalau mahal klien marahlah sebab dia punya poket tak cukup tebal nak support so you kena ensure that structure tu selamat fulfill its purpose strong tetapi dalam bajet yang bersesuaian lah kalau boleh yang paling minimum lah cost dia kan so so maksud you kena you kena present your design to your Uh, clients so that the clients can estimate whether his financial is uh, enough or not to support your project. So this is uh, the four main objective of design. Ada soalan tak sekarang ni? Ada soalan? Tak ada. Pasti eh. Okay. So these are the members that you will design in this syllabus. Starting with roof level. So roof level ni biasa kita akan ada roof beam lah. Kita akan ada roof beam. We have slab structure. Slab structure ni lantai. Lantai. Biasa lantai ni berbentuk segi empat lah. Slab. And then beam. Okay. Biasanya di bawah slab ni kita akan ada beam ni. Ha, ini beam eh. Yang saya lorikkan ni adalah beam. Di atas dia adalah slab. So meaning that you have also beam here. Eh? So beam tu acting as a support to your slab. Eh? Column. Column adalah tiang lah. 
biasa tiang yang uh, menegak foundation meaning that the uh, the structure that you build underneath the soil so usually kalau you ada soil you akan tanam footing dalam tanah okay. so foundation ni boleh jadi dua jenis sistem eh you akan ada footing ataupun you akan ada pal okay and then the last one is a wall so wall is not structures eh wall is not structures structures adalah yang roofs slab beam column and foundation Eh, so ada gambar lepas ni saya rasa tunjuk untuk roof. So this is the roof, atap lah, eh, atap bumbung. Uh, di mana atap ni adalah untuk you nak alirkan air hujan dan juga untuk letak you punya genting atap ni, eh, your your roofing sheeting, roof sheeting to ensure that you punya uh, sunlight does not uh, in contact your skin lah and to protect the people's punya skin and also to protect from the people from rain eh? and to support this roof you need roof beam eh? slab as i said before adalah lantai biasanya slab ni adalah flat surface permukaan rata you boleh nampak gambar tu kan used to support loads so ingat lantai yang macam sekarang ni you berada kat bilik you Bilik you ada lantai yang mana menanggung beban diri you. You sekarang tengah duduk atas lantai tu. Berat you adalah loads to the lantai. Selain daripada itu juga, meja yang you guna untuk sangga you punya laptop tu pun memberi beban kepada lantai. Apa lagi? You punya wardrobe, you punya laci, laci baju pun memberi load kepada lantai dan sebagainya. So you have to know what is the load acting on it. Eh? Uh, so this is uh, lantai. And then you can see this kind of thing. Eh? This is that we call as spacer. Eh? Spacer. Concrete spacer. Concrete spacer is to give you some kind of cover. Eh? To give you cover. Nanti kita akan bincang lagi about cover later on. And then this uh, slab you have reinforcement you nampak reinforcement ni besi nampak ni besi ni dalam bentuk begini eh okay, you ada besi and then after that uh, uh, reinforcement has been arranged then you pour concrete dan hasilnya kena nampak benda yang macam ni lah you ada nampak bersimen aja tetapi simen tu dah tutup concrete kat bawah tu you tak nampak lah so this is a reinforced concrete slab eh reinforced concrete slab beam So you may see that this is a beam, eh? yang ni beam. Eh? So sebelum you nampak beam ni dalam bentuk concrete, you akan nampak besi-besi ni. Eh? You ada top reinforcement at the top, and then you ada bottom reinforcement at the bottom, and then you have shearling eh, kat sini, shearling. So after you uh, construct this uh, apa ni uh, reinforcement, you will put inside a formwork. Eh? Pembuat kayu tu, dia nampak kan, dia dah masukkan kayu yang maksudnya you, dia menanti uh, pekerja to pour the concrete dan akhirnya dia akan mengeras menjadi beam yang macam ni lah. Eh, dia akan jadi beam ni. Okay, so nanti uh, insya Allah uh, there will be a, a lecture from engineers outside, saya jemput, to show you this thing Uh, so that you can learn uh, this construction much more better. Eh, nanti saya akan tunjuk. Saya akan bawa you nanti. So lepas, selepas uh, balik raya lah kan. Sebab you will sit kat rumah. Okay, column. As I said before. Column can be a circular column. Ada column yang berbentuk bulat. Ada. Ada column yang berbentuk segi empat. Biasanya dua bentuk yang tipikal lah. Kadang-kadang ada juga column yang berbentuk octagon. Ada juga Tapi yang ni fancy lah eh. Fancy column depending on the architects. Eh? So inside the column, you must have reinforcement. You mesti ada besi kat dalam tu. Eh? You mesti ada besi. And then you put the the the, the steel inside uh, apa ni? Formwork. And after you pour concrete dan bila dikeras, dia akan jadi macam ni lah. So you boleh nampak sini, ini beam. Ni, nampak ni? Ini beam. Ini pun beam. Yang ni column. Yang ni slab. Nampak ni? Ini slab. Eh? So dalam gambar tu, ada slab ada beam, ada column. 
So nampak tak beza slab beam dengan kolon dalam gambar tu? Nampak tak? Ada soalan tak ni sekat ni? Eh, ini you punya beam. Ini you punya beam. This is another beam. This is your column. And this is your slab. Sebab dalam bangunan memang kita akan construct secara serentak lah. Dia tak akan terpisah-pisah eh. Mesti ada gabungan slab, beam and column lah. Eh. Cuma dalam gambar yang sebelah kanan ni, dia tak masak, tak tak buka lagi forward. Then you cannot see the, con the, the column, concrete column. Eh. Okay, foundation. Okay, as I said, foundation is a structure that you put underneath the soil. Okay. So what is the function of this uh, foundation is to transfer the load from the column to the soil safely. Okay. Supaya dia boleh transfer loads daripada column biasanya and the load will be dispersed, diserahkan, disebarkan ke dalam tanah secara selamat. Kalau tidak nanti bangunan you akan mendap. Eh, dia akan mendap. So that's why we need footing ya. This is that we call as footing. RC R C footing. Dia biasa segi empat. And then dalam footing you akan nampak reinforcement ni. Eh. Akan ada besi lah. Dia ada besi. And then you ada uh, column punya reinforcement di atas. And you pour the concrete. And after it harden, dia akan jadi macam ni lah. Yang you nampak gambar kat sini. Okay, ada soalan tak setakat ni? Okay, ini bangunan yang dah siap lah eh. You boleh nampak column. You can see column. You can see slab. Eh. Slab ni nampak kecil je kat sini. You tak nampak sangat. And beam eh. So kat sini saya rasa beam ni macam tak berapa kena eh. Saya tak berapa setuju gambar beam kat sini. Sepatutnya beam ni adalah benda yang menyokong uh, slab eh. You tak nampak kat sini sebenarnya. You tak nampak beam sebenarnya kat sini. Eh? Saya tak berapa setuju sangat nak, nak tunjuk gambar beam kat sini. Okey tak apa nanti kita akan tunjuk gambar yang lain lah. Nanti like, next lecture eh. Gambar ni tak berapa sesuai sangat. Cuma dia nampak slab dengan column ni lah. Footing tak nampak eh. Sebab footing di dalam tanah. Jadi tak boleh nampak lah. Kalau nampak footing kat sini maksudnya. Ada something is not right with your, with your soil lah. Eh? Soil tu telah terbuka. Uh, which is not correct lah. Eh? Sepatutnya tak boleh nampak footing. Dia berada dalam tanah. Eh, at least 1 meter deep di dalam tanah. Eh. Okey. Boleh faham tak ni? Kita ada lagi setengah jam ni. So saya bagi dalam masa 5 minit rehat. Boleh? 5 minit rehat. Okey tak? Okey. Okey so sekarang 9.22. So 9.28 kita akan sambung balik. Okay. So jang, uh, you nak tutup boleh. Tapi kan pukul 9.28 buka balik kamera. Eh, 9.28 kan buka balik.
Okey, Assalamualaikum. Kita sambung balik. 9.28. Buka kamera. Okey, the rest. Terima kasih kerana membuka kamera. So, saya nampak anda ada di depan ni. Okey sikit. So, tidak nanti macam saya cakap seseorang saja. So rakaman ni nanti saya akan bagi beri kepada you eh. Uh, this recorded version will be given to you. Uh, I will put inside MS Team lah. And you can download uh, before 30 days eh. Because uh, before it's being deleted. So ensure that you download it before it's being deleted lah. Kalau tidak nanti you tak ada lagi uh, apa ni. Tak ada lagi uh, sumber untuk me, apa ni. Untuk buat review balik. Okay. Muhammad Farahi ni belum lagi keluar gambar. Tolong buka eh. Saya nak teruskan. So yang sure that nanti bila saya pergi balik. Farahi ni dah buka eh. Okay. So all of you can see the screen with the uh, basic principle of RC design. You boleh nampak ke? Boleh nampak? Boleh boleh. Okay. So now we go back to the principle of RC design. This is very very important. Sebab soalan exam memang suka tanya ini. Okay. So in order to understand the basic principle of RC design, usually we consider a beam, as you can see in front of you, there is a beam, a blue color beam, which is under uniformly distributed load that acting vertically. So under that force from solid mechanics, you will know that that beam will be deflected downwards and you can see that the deformation pattern uh, by seeing the red color uh, shape. Right? You can see that the red color shape showing the beam is being deflected. And from solid mechanics, you know that the top fiber, the top fiber will experience compression stress. And the bottom fiber will experience tension stress. And there is a line uh, at the green color deck, which is this line. This line, the stresses there is zero, which is not compression, which is not tension. And that line we call it as a neutral axis. Okay, neutral axis. So remember, eh, when you have a section, is being under UDL load, it will be deflected. Secara logiknya, bila deflected, the top fiber will have compression stress and the bottom fiber will experience tension. And there is a line in the middle, usually, that, that is not compression and tension that we call as neutral axis depth. Okay. And if let's say this member is made from concrete, Katakan tak ada steel, eh? katakan tak ada steel, just concrete only. You know that concrete is good in compression. So maksudnya dia tidak akan berlaku failure dekat situ. But you know that concrete is not good in tension. Yang ini yang problem. The bottom fiber is problem. Why? Because concrete has a very low tensile strength. So in order to uh, to make sure that that part does not fail due to cracks. Eh? Sebab bila berlakunya tension failure, you will have cracks. You akan ada cracks kat situ. So bila structure cracks, you have already said that that such is fail. So in order to uh, avoid that cracks, you will put your steel reinforcement at the bottom. So, you akan letak steel dekat bahagian bawah. Bukannya dekat atas. Kenapa? Sebab uh, the steel is for kata the tensile stress. The tension stress. So, sebab itu besi tu letaknya di bawah. Kenapa besi tak letak di atas? Sebab di atas the stress is compression and concrete is good in compression. Konkrit dia tak bagus dalam tension sebab bila saja dia fail in tension, retak akan ada. Eh? So nak elakkan retak tu, kita akan letak steel reinforcement at the bottom 
so that all the tension stress will be picked up by the steel reinforcement. So faham tak kenapa sekarang kita have to combine concrete and steel as one material. The material that we call as RC structure. Faham tak? Tahu kan peranan masing-masing? Peranan concrete tu apa? Peranan steel tu apa sekarang? Boleh saya tanya dengan you? Apa peranan dia? Masih lagi, okay. okay. Muhammad Nazur, apa peranan steel tu? Kenapa kita tak bersih? Uh, kita nak elak daripada dia brittle. Elakkan dia apa? Daripada uh, rapuh. Rapuh. Rapuh tu betul, tapi you kena betulkan perkataan you. Because concrete is weak in tension stress. Okay. Okay. So, besi good in tension stress. Jadi, can, why not kita kahwinkan tempat yang memerlukan steel, yang mana steel tu boleh ambil ambil apa stress tensile, kita letak dekat situ. Jadi, ke tempat situ yang sepatutnya lemah in tension, sudah diambil alih oleh oleh steel. Okay. Yang you cakap pasal uh, daktar tu sebenarnya selepas itu. Eh. Even kalau letak steel pun, memang dia boleh tahan. Tapi cuma pada certain load, you still akan dapat crack juga. Cuma lambat. Lambat berbanding kalau tak ada steel. Okay. So, retak yang berlaku setelah steel tu, itu yang kita katakan dia ada start daktar failure. Eh. Daktar failure. Okay. Oops, sorry. Silap. Bukan yang ni, saya nak kena. Okay. So that's why kita kena kawin eh dua-dua meter eh satu concrete satu steel. Dan ini adalah uh, soalan yang pernah keluar juga dah dalam final tentang kelebihan-kelebihan concrete saja. Kenapa RC ni banyak digunakan di dunia? Salah satu sebabnya adalah very high compressive strength, sorry. Sebab concrete you know is very good in compression. Konkrit amat bagus dalam compression. Sebab itu dia digunakan dalam uh, bangunan. Okay. And concrete can be casted to any shapes yang kita nak. Kita nak shape bentuk bulat ke? Kita nak shape hexagon ke? Kita nak bentuk T ke? Kita nak bentuk L ke? We can do it. Because concrete can be easily poured in the formwork. Ikut saja bentuk. So that's why it is very famous to be used because you can cast whatever shape that you wanted lah. Eh? The third one will be fire resistance. Eh? Concrete is very good in fire. Kalau you pernah kali duduk rumah teres, eh? kalau rumah teres, kalau rumah semi di takkan nampak lah rumah teres. Eh? Rumah teres antara you dengan jiran kalau keluar rumah, kan? you akan nampak ada satu dinding. Di tengah-tengah yang memisahkan antara you dengan jiran. Perasan tak tu? You, you pernah keluar tak dari rumah teres? You nampak ada satu ni terkeluar dari bumbung. Sikit kan? Yang memisahkan you dengan jiran sebelah. Perasan tak? Atau tak, tak perasan? Atau semua ni dulu rumah kampung. Pernah tengok tak dinding tu? Pernah, saya. Dinding tu dibuat oleh apa? Saya tanya you. Dinding tu dibuat oleh bahan apa? Nah, dinding tu dibuat oleh bahan apa? Konkrit kan? Konkrit wall. Why we put that wall uh, separating your house and neighbor house Because we want to avoid fire merebak ke sebelah. Kalau kata rumah you terbakar, insya Allah dengan dinding itu, dia akan menyebabkan dia tak boleh membakar rumah di sebelah. Sebab concrete is good at fire resistance. Eh, Ini concrete, eh? bukan bukan steel. Eh? Concrete saja. So, sebab itulah kita ada dinding yang memisahkan antara kita dengan jiran sebelah. Sebab kita berharap dinding itu akan menghalang perebakan kebakaran ke sebelah because concrete is very good in fire. Okay. 
very long service this is very very relative lah kalau you buat concrete tak bagus dia punya mix dia tak long service juga so you have to ensure that your concrete to be mixed properly and then after you mix the concrete properly you have to uh, apa ni kita kena vibrate concrete tu so that the bubbles inside the concrete will uh, will be apa shifted out and your concrete will have a very good mix then baru you can dapat long service life lah so maksud long service life ni apa maksudnya concrete tu, tu tak akan ada berlaku pemecahan concrete tu tidak akan menyebabkan air masuk ke dalam concrete garam tak boleh masuk dalam concrete sebab dia dia padat so maksudnya dalam masa 50 tahun should be the concrete can work well for long time Uh, that is the mean of long service life. Eh, untuk bangunan kita berharap selama 50 tahun ya. Eh? Maksudnya kalau you you graduate tahun 19 uh, katakan 2024, you design satu bangunan, you bertanggungjawab bangunan tu setelah 50 tahun lagi. So apa-apa jadi pada bangunan tu you bertanggungjawab. 50 tahun. Macam mana saya boleh tahu 50 tahun tu? You rukut zero. You boleh tengok you rukut zero yang saya beritahu tadi. Dia beritahu untuk bangunan 50 tahun. Untuk empangan 100 tahun. Dan sebagainya. Eh? So sebab itu kita kena pastikan long service life. Eh? Macam bangun jabatan Pulau Pinang tu. Saya rasa dah service about 30 years, 40 years. Tetapi keadaan dia dah macam uzo. Eh? So kita pun tak pasti sama ada material made uh, using for it is good or not. We don't know. Sama ada is it Okey atau tidak. Eh? Sepatut dia kena long service life. Eh? And the last advantage is the economic. Eh? So concrete in Malaysia is very economical. Why? We have a lot of quarries. Especially kat Ipoh. Kat Ipoh you boleh nampak kalau kat the highway tu banyak gunung dah kena tarah. Eh? So kenapa gunung tu kena tarah? Because they, that is the resources for making clinker. Clinker adalah material for concrete, for cement. So we have an abundance of resources to create cement. So that's why it is considered to be economical. Berbeza dengan negara US. US dia tak banyak sangat bahan mentah untuk buat konkrit. So that's why US banyak guna steel. Dia tak banyak guna konkrit sebab it's not economical to their country. So uh, on average, Kebanyakan dunia uh, mempunyai supply kepada konkret uh, cuma setengah-setengah negara. Lah. Eh? So in Malaysia is very economical. So this is the key point of concrete advantages. Okey tak setakat ni? Kelebihan-kelebihan konkret. Okey? Okey. Okey. Uh, ini pula masalah konkret. Dalam mana-mana benda di dunia ni mesti ada jodoh dia. Ada hidup, ada mati, ada putih, ada hitam, ada cantik, ada hodoh, ada baik, ada tak baik. Ada advantages, ada disadvantages. So what are the disadvantages of concrete? Seperti yang saya dah berbuih begitu tadi, is a very have a low tensile strength. Concrete good at compression strength. Tetapi ni satu masalah, low tensile strength. And that's why we top up this by using steel rebar. Because steel rebar can take tensile strength. Okay. Selain daripada itu juga, concrete is a low ductility. So what is the mean of low ductility? Brittle. Concrete is a brittle material, rapuh. Seperti uh, kuih raya. Rapuh. You letak lop sikit, you gigit sikit, dah pecah. Eh? So adakah you nak gunakan meat yang brittle dalam construction? Should be not. And that's why kita letakkan besi. Eh? To increase the ductility. Volume instability, it depends on the temperature. So sometimes if let's say you cast in the country that has a very high temperature differences, sometimes it's very low in the morning temperature, at the in the afternoon it's very high, so the water can uh, evaporate from the mix. So making the concrete volume will be unstable. Lah. It's a problem. Lah. So below volume is stable, you punya size of your apa ni, you punya size of concrete will be reduced. Lah. So bila air dah keluar, 
sepatut ia kena buat konkrit 150 kali 400 setengah. Tapi bila air keluar, dia jadi mengecut. Kenapa? Sebab volume instability. So, this is great depending on the country yang ada masalah suhu lah. Eh? Negara kita okey, tak sangat. Tapi contoh macam negara-negara di Timur Tengah, macam di Arab, uh, Syria and so on, they have a very high differences of temperature. Right? Low tensile, uh, sorry, low strength width ratio. Uh, in, in terms of strength, to width is very low. So maksudnya, dia tak berapa kuat. Eh? Tak berapa kuat kalau kita tak top up dengan mitri dan lain. Contohnya, steel. So that's why kita kena kahwinkan dengan steel. Eh? Sebab kita nak avoid tensile strength, low ductility and low strength. Eh? So maksudnya, uh, walaupun konkrit, we have these advantages, we have the solution lah to avoid these advantages by using steel reinforcement. Okay, ha, sekarang ni properties kita, kalau kita mix them together. Tadi property yang kalau kita buat asing-asing eh. Yang ni maksudnya saya guna konkrit saja. Yang ni kalau saya combine dia macam mana? Saya combine konkrit dengan steel. Apa dia punya properties? So when you combine konkrit and steel together, in term of strength, in tension, remember, konkrit is very poor in tension, but still can overcome it by taking the tension stress. So that's why kita kena combine concrete dengan steel. Sebab concrete tak bagus dalam tension. Tetapi still good in tension. In terms of strength in compression, as I said, concrete memang bagus dalam compression. Sebab itulah concrete digunakan sebagai wall. Wall concrete. Eh? Sebab wall tu subjected to compression. Dinding kan? Dinding kita kan dimampatkan oleh beban di atas kan? Jadi dimampat. Jadi kita gunakan concrete. Eh? However, for steel, dia ada problem. Walaupun dia bagus, dia ada problem. Eh? Problemnya apa? Dia ada buckling. What is buckling? Buckling ni macam ni. Let's say you have a, a steel column. Sorry. Ya, yeah, saya kena bagi pointer dia to be pen. Let's say you have a steel column. Eh? Let's say this steel. Bukan concrete. Eh? Steel. A very long column. Subjected to compression force. And this compression force P, let's say you increase and increase and increase and suddenly dia buckle macam ni. Yang ini yang kita nampakkan sebagai buckling. Eh? Buckling ni bahasa Melayu melengkuk. Eh? Dia melengkuk. So when structure is buckle, then we say that is a failure. Eh? Structure tak boleh buckle. So maksudnya uh, steel dia bagus dalam compression, tapi you kena hati-hati sebab bila you tekan terlalu kuat, kolam tu boleh buckle. apa um, steel section will buckle. Oops, dia akan buckle. Eh? Dia akan melendut. Okay, in term of shear tak ada sangat isu. Uh, is fair for concrete and is good for steel. Yang ni tak sangat isu lah. Eh. Yang isu dua ni. Durability. Okay. Concrete has a very good durability dengan syarat. Ha, dia tak boleh kata good durability je. Dia ada syarat-syarat je. Syarat-syarat ni adalah the mixed design is properly done. Maksudnya when you prepare the concrete mix, Ensure that there is no bubble. So how to avoid the bubble? You have to perform the uh, apa ni? compaction. Eh? So that the uh, the air bubble that is trapped inside the concrete will be moved out eh, from the mix. Apa lagi? You have to ensure that also your uh, your aggregate size, your cost aggregate and apa ni, uh, fine aggregate is uh, selectively select so that you can have a very good workability. Yeah, you pernah buat kan, concrete mix design kan? So, memang bagus lah, tapi ada syarat. However, durability for, for steel, dia ada masalah sikit, especially about pengkaratan, corrosion. So, if let's say the steel section is exposed uh, under sufficient time to, let's say, to uh, water, moisture content, 
lembapan udara ataupun terdedah dengan uh, larutan garam especially kalau struktur itu terdedah dalam air laut then by time it will be corroded okay. so meaning that uh, the structure that made from concrete and steel you have to make sure very careful when you construct inside the seawater ataupun that structure is inside a city yeah, sebab city will be subjected to acid rain city kan melepaskan banyak-banyak karbon dioksida apa lagi kereta pun keluarkan monoksid that monoksid akan larut dalam udara hujan akan larut dengan dia kemudian dia sentuh permukaan konkrit konkrit dia akan merosakkan nah, itulah menyebabkan nanti dia masuk dan menyebabkan the reinforcement will be corroded yeah, so ini masalah tentang besi. Yeah. Dia easily to be corroded. Tapi kalau reinforcement you tu, you chat. Yeah. Tapi tak pernah orang buat lah. Maksudnya besi sebelum you masuk dalam concrete, you letak lapisan chat. And then after you install inside concrete, that is okay lah. Cuma cost. Dan saya tak pernah tengok pun dalam mana-mana construction pun, indun-indun tu chat, chat besi tu, kemudian dia pasang. Tak mungkin. Kebanyakan yang gunakan besi yang sedia ada, kadang, -kadang yang berkarat tu juga lah digunakan. Eh? So, ada problem sebenarnya guna yang berkarat tu, tapi tu certain extent lah eh. Okay, fire resistant as I said before, remember about the example of the dinding yang memisahkan jiran you dengan you. Uh, dia bagus sebab dia memang mengelakkan perebakan apa ni, uh, api. So, it's very good in fire resistance. The only problem is about steel. Eh? Steel is very poor in terms of uh, fire resistance because at certain temperature yang saya tahu sekitar 2000 degree Celsius, the steel will lose its ability to hold the loads. Yang ini you boleh tengok dalam uh, episode apa Twin Tower yang kena langgar dengan kapal terbang. Twin Tower ke? Bukan Twin Tower apa? apa tak yang 9/11 September attack terrorism dan benda tu berlaku di US dan you ingat eh kat US bangunan dibuat oleh besi eh, bukan konkrit so sebab itu itu adalah satu contoh yang terbaik sebab besi dia tiba-tiba tak cukup kuat nak tanggung beban sebab api yang terhasil perletupan kapal terbang tu memanaskan besi sehingga temperature more than 2000 degrees menyebabkan semua besi dia tak mampu tahan Loons dan dia collapse. Okay dah ni? Boleh faham kan tentang apa yang saya cerita ni? Sifat-sifat yang ada pada concrete dengan steel kali combine together. Boleh kan ni? Hello gang? Boleh saya. Senyap pun no you ni. Apa salah ni? Terlalu pasif. Eh? Okay. Ha, ini construction flow lah. Ya, ini maksudnya you can tahu uh, how the structure is being designed lah. So usually the person that uh, required to be, to have the project will be the client lah. Eh? So client will be your master lah uh, to uh, to have the building. And usually this client will pass the job, he will, he will appoint architects uh, to assist him or her to uh, plan the building, the building uh, orientation. So architect akan draw lah. Dia punya architecture requirements on, nak, nak apa, nak dinding berapa tebal, nak pintu berapa besar, nak letak pintu kat mana, bumbung berapa slope dan sebagainya lah. And after that, the uh, the architect will appoint the engineers, the structural engineers. Ya, yeah, itu you lah. Sebab itu you belajar subjek ni. You nak jadi engineer satu hari nanti kan? Sekali you buat degree lah. To to design. Ah, uh, sebab itu yang you kena belajar about design. To design the structures. Yaitu you punya beam, you punya slab, you punya column, you punya foundation. So after you design the the job well. Then you pass that drawings and the details to the contractors to build the structures. So, maksudnya kita kena buat ni as a teamwork lah. Dia bukanlah satu benda yang separated eh. Masing-masing ada tugas. Masing-masing ada peranan. At one point, sometimes 
all of us we have to collaborate at one time. Eh? So this is the flow of the construction from the client until to the contractors. Eh? So I think you can read this more from the book. I just give you some kind of uh, apa ni dia punya tips eh? dia punya summary. Ah eh? uh, ni contoh-contoh bangunan lah yang yang ada dalam nota ni. Okay. So you boleh tengok. Ah uh, ini contoh architecture drawings. Okay, nanti you belajar dalam 358. Saya tak tahu adakah last semester ni you belajar 358. You you get the architectural drawings. Okay, at each floor. And from each floor, you have to prepare this. This is your job to prepare the structural drawings. And, ah, okay. So nanti dalam you future nanti, you tengok eh, you kena isi entry survey. Dan juga that notice text yang saya tunjuk tadi. Mana tadi? Yang that notice text, yang ni. So ada dua kerja you kena buat eh. You kena tengok dalam MS Team. Diagnostic test. Ni you dah download. And then you kena tulis solution. Scan lah you punya solution. And then attach dal dengan diagnostic test tu. Sebagai satu PDF file. Kemudian masuk dalam ni. Eh, Yang kedua you kena buka U Future. You kena jawab Entry Survey. Eh, So ada dua kerja lah. So I think that's all for for now. Okay, dan kita akan sambung lagi sejam lagi. Tu yang saya katakan you eh. Topik satu ni nak cover topik one, topik itu confirm tiga jam tak cukup. Sebab memang saya terpaksa pinjam sama ada tutorial you ataupun minggu depan ni lecture sejam untuk untuk ni lah, untuk nak habiskan. Ha, sebab dia banyak benda nak kena bincang supaya you faham. Sebab kalau saya baca nota tu, you baca itu je. Saya rasa tak sampai pada you. Ini, ini pun tak tahu sampai tidak pada you, saya pun tak pasti. Eh, saya cuba yang terbaik lah. So, if let's say you are you have any problem to understand the notes, you can even to download this uh, apa ni video or you can contact me by WhatsApp and then I can assist you lah if you have any problem. Eh? So, I think that's all from me. Ensure jangan lupa you punya apa you future attendance. Saya pun akan download juga attendance ini. Saya akan match. Uh, so ensure you do your you future attendance, you future entries uh, exit survey dan diagnosis test ini. Eh, so cuba buat pada hari ini lah. Eh, semua tu. So ada apa soalan tak sebelum saya stop this lecture? Tak ada eh? Tadi tak ada apa-apa soalan? Farah? Nurusna, Farani, Asman, Muhammad Hanif dengan Azrul. Okay, nanti you kena kenal antara satu sama lain sebab di minggu ke-10 kena buat group untuk projek. So, kena pilih empat member sahaja. Eh. Maksimum tak boleh lima, empat. So, tengoklah mana-mana member yang kamcing, you boleh buat kawan. Dah kena kenal pastilah. Okay, that's all from me. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. See you again. Terima kasih, Sir. Okay, sama-sama. Terima kasih, Sir. Terima kasih, Sir. Sama-sama. Sama-sama.